So if we add a dependent then, we still have married filing joint, no change there, but now we have the dependent in place and we're gonna say they're a qualifying child. So nothing really changes on the first page. We still have the same standard deduction. That's the big point that that one dependent's not gonna change the status like it could on a single status. If I go to the second page, the tax is still at the 8484, but we now have the the child tax credit. That's the big you know benefit, of course. And I can go into the other credits here and say child number one, we've got the child tax credit pulling that over and there's the 2000. So that gives us our 6484 on the tax. And then we've got the 15,000 to get us to the, to the 8516. So there is that on, on that one. Now, if I added another child, we'd have a similar situation. If the income was below a certain threshold, you could also have the earned income credit factored in when married. It's not like that goes away when married, but I, when you have different income amounts, when single versus married, that the benefits of those refundable credits are, could be different, which again, we'll talk about in the future. So, so now you could imagine situations where the, the uh, dependent wasn't a qualifying child uh, or possibly they're a qualifying child, but they're a full-time student, let's say. So, so, so they're over the threshold to get the child tax credit. So in my data input, I'm gonna say that this one is still uh, the, the son, so still the child, but uh, they're gonna be a student aged 19 to 23. And of course I changed uh, the birth date to put them in that range. So then if I go back up, I'm gonna say, all right, well now they're still a dependent, but they're not gonna be qualifying for the child tax credit. They're still like a qualifying child in that they were a child qualifying for a dependent as opposed to a non-child a non-child qualifying for a dependent, but they don't have the, the qualifications in terms of age and whatnot to qualify for the child tax credit. So then the question is, do you get the, the credit for other dependents? Which of course is substantially less, right? So there's no change on the first page here. The second page, we've got the change from uh, from the the 2000 to 500. So if I go back on over and I look at my uh, other credits, so now let's add another column down here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna insert another rows, not columns. These are rows, these are rows, whatever, dude. Anyways, I'm gonna copy this stuff and put that here. And this is gonna say other, other dependent credits. And this is, this is dependent one, which happens to be a child, but we'll just say dependent. We might actually put their name there in practice. And so now I'm going to say, I don't have these two, but I have this other dependent 500 and that's pulling into the total, which will pull into the first page. There's a 500. There's the total tax seven, nine, uh, eight, four. So the seven, nine, eight, four, 15,000 withheld gets us to the seven, oh one six seven oh one six boom so there is that and so there's there's the general uh the general rules now obviously if they're not you can see kind of like with the data input you can run different scenarios all those kind of strange kind of scenarios so you can see here in the data input we have the adopted child aunt brother child daughter father uh grand grandchild notice remember there's a little bit different rules for whether they live with you or not when you're talking about uh parents uh, versus versus other dependents and whatnot the test could be a little bit different there so keep that in mind niece and so on and so forth and then i'm going to say months lived lived at home so i'm going to say 12 here a child living with the taxpayer versus child not living with the taxpayer dependent other than a child so I'm going to say this is a dependent other than a child, let's say, and let's say they're going to be not a student, but we'll say child tax credit when applicable, but they're a dependent other than a child. So it's not going to be applicable there. And then uh, the child tax credit when applicable, or you could force it to suppress and the uh, uh, dependent claimed by the taxpayer or the spouse. So if you had a married situation, you might be saying, okay, the dependent is being uh, claimed by the spouse, 
the pendant not claimed this year. So you can check that off if you had the information in, but possibly you, you have a custody agreement where possibly the dependent's being claimed by one uh, one parent one year or custodial person one year and one in the following year, for example, and so on and so forth. So all of those kind of gray area uh, situations, you should be able to populate kind of in your data input forms here. And then uh, when you pull it over, when you pull it over, uh, we, they, they should be able, you should be able to kind of have an idea of the rules in your mind and see if the rules are then populating as you would think. So once again, if they're not a qualifying child, if there's some other kind of dependent that qualifies, the main benefit would be not the child tax credit, which is usually the big one, but uh, the other uh, credit for other dependents typically would be the general rule. So once again, same kind of scenario here with that 500 credit instead of the 2000 credit. So I won't go into basically every other kind of scenario that that happens here, but I just want to get a general idea for now what the impact of having a dependent could be in the different areas. And we focused more in prior presentations on the filing statuses changing, which could change in part to the dependents. So some of this stuff is interrelated. We talked about a change to the filing status possibly having, of course, an impact on the standard deduction. We talked about the change to the filing status possibly having a change to the tax brackets that will be applied on the tax tables when we do the actual tax calculation. We talked about the dependents. Usually the big thing that comes to mind are the the whether they qualify for the dependent credits, child tax credit being the bigger one or the, the other dependents. That's the first thing that comes to mind. Although again, the dependents could have a significant impact on some of the refundable items, which means part of the part of the child tax credit could be refundable and the earned income tax credit could be, again, a really big, significant item to take into consideration uh, if people are in the lower income side of things that could have a, 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 a effect on. And so some of those credits we will focus in on the credit side again later, looking at it from the angle of of the credits, which again will tie back into the dependents, but our focus in that case will be looking on the different ways these credits will be uh, affected uh, in those items.